Okay. Recording. I got wiggles. Let's do a podcast. Rock and roll. Let's do a podcast. Bow, 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 bow. I I'm watching the tail end of the James Webb Space Telescope deployment animation. Animation. So it's, animation. it's their rendering of how it <laughs> deploys. Yes. Northrop Grumman's deployment. It's kind of neat. It shows the tra- the, the like we'll where it is too don't don't waste it <laughs> i thought we were recording yeah let's do oh it. we're recording but... <laughs> all right okay welcome back to another engineering podcast Woo! welcome back um, everybody uh, we've hit a point now where i'm not counting so it's whatever number is on the thing Ooh. and it's not because the number's too high it's because we keep screwing stuff up <laughs> <laughs> This yeah. is like our 12th session and maybe our 6th episode. 6 sounds in the right range um, of episodes. And, and we might repeat some topics just because yeah, we you talked know, about hey, Well, I mean, but I we also don't... Yeah, exactly. So we don't know. We have different things to say about them most of the time as well. Psych, just kidding. We have super organized notes and we know exactly what we're doing all the time. Honestly, compared to most people, we probably do. We do have a shared document <laughs> with some notes in it. I think that we're both looking at it at the same that's, time. I, that's a I huge just, accomplishment. Being in school is interesting because I get to see how much of the world really actually... Like when you tell me you're super stressed out with work, like I, I believe it because I've seen you work. But I've also seen a lot of other people work. And I'm convinced that at least 70% of the workforce spends most of its time walking around in circles, talking about how busy it is and not doing work. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Like I feel like I stressed spend out about my the time. idea that they're stressed. And, and uh, anyway, <laughs> I think sadly, most people so, just don't enjoy what they do. Yeah, that's probably it's hard to get hard to get behind it. it. And a lot of jobs, uh, would be hard to enjoy probably which this is okay so this is the thing i was going to put well first so we we're uh we're gonna be trying some different formats coming up um partially to make production easier on us to make episodes easier on you by making them shorter (laughs) they're of varying lengths to select from based on the time that you have available so basically we're going to split off some of the hit list stuff and some of the the bigger stuff um, and so this week we're doing hit list only. Oh, hit list episode number one. That makes hit, it easy. Hit list episode number one. There Boom. Count it. Uh, so let's just do the first, the first thing that I was thinking of Yeah. that we had a perfect segue into just a second ago, but now I forgot what it is because it's not actually on the list. What were oh. we talking about? I'm still reading about it while you're talking. The James Webb Space no, Telescope. No, no, I was going to go into something else. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, what topic are you talking oh, about? So I was looking at job postings, and I've noticed a trend lately of jobs offering unlimited paid vacation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the big tech companies are really screwing every other company with these ridiculous things that they're they're throwing out there. Well, I, it's so... <laughs> the. I think the idea is supposed to be that, well, for one, they're trying to lure in people that actually like what they do. Totally. Generally speaking, as a workforce, like developers. And so if you're talking about people that actually like what they do, you don't have to have this like industrial age idea of you grind away at a job that you hate so you can earn some vacation. That's such a horrible mindset. And it's the mindset that we're taught to uh, prepare ourselves for from the first day of school. So I think the idea is if you don't hate your job, then you're not going to take a a crap load of vacation. In fact, you might competitively try not to take vacation. So it could go the other direction. It could actually be worse for the workforce than we think it is because it might increase pressure to like, as an example, we used to have uh, on the swim team in college, we you're, only allowed to practice a certain amount. They have NCAA rules about it, but every team goes over just technically anything past those hours is voluntary. 
quote, voluntary. <laughs> but you're not going to make the travel team and you're not going to end up being a captain if you don't stick around for the, quote, voluntary portion of the workout. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how the whole the whole world works, how your life works. You know, if you want to do something well, you got to stick around. So I wonder if, so my thought was like, well, I'm going to take that and I'm just going to take that vacation. <laughs> well, you'll probably get fired because there's probably a clause that says <laughs> you get unlimited vacation, but we can also fire you whenever we want, yeah, which I mean, is well, that's a great standard. agreement to get into. I don't think that is normally the agreement because it seems like it's really hard for companies to fire people because they get sued. So I say give infinite vacation, give huge bonuses, give six months off when you have a kid. But if you time things poorly and you're shitty at your job when you're there, then you get fired right away. Get out of here. We're going to hire someone else. I think that's fair. We used to have a standard. Uh, our basic policy was like if, if we hired somebody new and it wasn't feeling good two weeks in, like they were gone. If one person in the, in the executive meeting was like, yeah, not doing it for me. It sounds harsh, but like when it is harsh, when but you're it's worried the correct about, move. Well, when you're worried about burn rate at a company that only has so much money, you don't have time to stick around for six weeks, six months and wait and see if yeah. the guy gets gets his footing. There isn't time. It's like a, a you know, bad relationships. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. <laughs> Nobody wants to be mean to each other. And so everybody holds on to things that they should have gotten rid of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, harsh realities. Okay. Harsh so, realities take harsh lessons. Right. Teach them. But so, so unlimited paid vacation. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. It sounds awesome. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like anywhere that offers that kind of also requires that you work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Well, uh, the guy that really started it, or at least put weight behind it, was Richard Branson with Virgin. And his idea is basically, it's all it's already their expectation that you're going to be checking your phone and that you're kind of going to be tapped into work life anyway. Like there isn't this stark, you leave it behind when you leave the factory idea. And so I think he's right when he says it's only fair to go the other direction with it too, which is sort of like, okay, well, you're going to have to kind of be on the clock all the time because you're so connected and your work is technological anyway. It's a reasonable way to look at it. It's also but reasonable. So you can take off for Fridays if that works for you oh, and you don't yeah. screw up. But I, yeah. if you screw up, I mean, to me, it's almost like a, like, like I, I kind of like the accountability of like, hey, it's about the quality of your work. Yeah. And if somebody comes in and goes, he only works three days a week. And the executive's answer is, yeah, but he's so much better at it than you. <laughs> that, that That's okay. Like I, that strikes me as good for the workforce. You're going to, you're going to break some eggs, but you'll have a tasty omelet. <laughs> I uh, think that's a great yet strange analogy. And uh, I'm all for it. I say hire people easily, fire people easily, and uh, build a team that works. It's not always because someone's doing a bad job either. Sometimes people have to go just because they don't fit in. There's a better place where you will fit in. You should go work over there. I agree. Okay, what's up next? You're you're uh, itching on this one because you're watching the you're like watching a live stream right now or something. It's not live stream, sadly. It won't be oh, live okay. stream for another two two or three years probably <laughs> <laughs> the uh i was watching the deployment animation for the james webb space telescope which is the successor to the hubble space telescope and successor is a silly term but it's it's the next big space telescope that we're launching did chuck stockman's dad work on this one also um, Man, I have no idea. Did it, did, <laughs> did the last Stockman's time you thought about that on, guy on the Hubble? Yeah, he worked on Hubble. I think. I think about Charlie Stockman all the time, actually. And this is a really strange story, and it's a weird one for me to get out, but I'm going to say it in case Charlie Stockman's listening. Once when we were children, 
mm, middle school, maybe 12, 13, he had just finished a really cool drawing. He was an awesome artist. And I was looking at it and something struck me to fuck it up. And so I crumpled it up and threw it on the ground. And he was like, dude, what the hell did you do that for? And I didn't have a good answer. And I left the room. And I think about that all the time. And it was a huge lesson moment in my life <laughs> for no particular reason. We didn't like fight about it. I don't think I ever apologized. I am very sorry for crumpling up your drawing, Charlie Stockman. Thank you for somehow getting that out of my system for me. He, uh, We're friends on Facebook. He's He's in like a comedy thing now that's does stuff around la dope it's, it's I, called charles <laughs> oh right i need to look that up i actually did run in i ran into him at a party like 10 years ago seven years ago 10 12 fuck 12 13 years he, ago i, I oh, think shit. we both saw him at one of mike's shows oh perhaps which i bring up only as a smooth segue because mike has now agreed to be our first he's he's confirmed as our first oh, hell yeah. podcast guest He's he's gonna be a recurring guest, I hope. I have no idea <laughs> how that's gonna go. <laughs> Given how difficult it is sometimes just to get our shit together. <laughs> I can't imagine having a third person that we're trying to uh coordinate with. Uh luckily he is a comedic improv specialist, so Oh fantastic. So hopefully he'll, you know, just roll with it. <laughs> uh anyway, I I interrupted. The I think telescope. I interrupted. I interrupted your interruption. It's okay. We're all good. We're back on pace. James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. It, uh, so give me some specs. I assume it's bigger and better than Hubble. Uh, no, it's smaller and it takes pictures with less resolution, actually. <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a monster. It's big. It's uh, much, much bigger than Hubble. It's got a huge mirror. I don't know what the size is. It's like 25 feet or something. Uh, it's absurd. So lower resolution, but it can collect more light. No, that was just a dumb response to your question. It's huge oh, okay. and it takes much better pictures. <laughs> it has <laughs> has a much bigger collector. Um, it uh, it's neat in a lot of ways. It uh, it just in general is a is an improvement. I don't think it takes. You know, I'm not sure how. I think Hubble takes like visible light spectrum photos. I don't think this takes visible light spectrum photos. I think it's all in like infrared. But oh, that doesn't okay. really matter because we kind of artificially color all space photos anyway. They're, and, right. and that's all kind of arbitrary anyway. So, But that's an interesting well, thing to know it's not, anyway, uh, right, <laughs> about the world. Like we, can, we used to take, or at least I did a couple of projects in high school when we were doing photography where I used infrared film. Um, and like, so there is all kinds of spectrum of light around us that we can't see at yeah, any yeah. given time. And Tons they make films that can, and then you develop them, and you you can see that stuff. I mean, infrared video, it's it's working on the same right. you know, idea. Um, it's just a cool idea that there's stuff. I mean, that, that stuff is around us all the time. I mean, we can't. the uh, radio waves that communicate, uh, like, the radio to your car is the same thing. It's the same phenomenon as light that you see. Your eyes just can't pick up radio waves. So if you could see in the spectrum of radio waves, you could see the radio flying around you right now, but you can't because your eyes just don't respond to that. So we're tuned to a very small spectrum, which is the visible electromagnetic radiation that we can see, like red, green, yellow. Um, and so a lot... Roy Biv. Microwaves... For instance, same thing. Uh, radio waves, same thing. X-rays, same thing. They're all the exact same thing. We just can't see them with our eyes. Which people don't tend to know. It's a, it's a, and it's such a weird thing. Like and they're how, measured, what they're is measured it? in frequency, right? So that's how so, yep. close together the the waves are. Yeah, how close together the little ripples are in the wave as it's traveling. And it's interesting that we can see some that are a certain distance apart in the, in, as they travel and the, and some we can't. Yeah. And light's weird because it's some fundamental force of the universe that we don't really understand anyway. So it also behaves like a particle. So it, our eyes are sensitive to certain particles and then the particles have different frequencies and it's, it's all, it's very confusing. 
It's very interesting eye. when you read about it, but I don't really know it's really what I'm talking about. We could do a whole separate episode on the eye. Yeah, and we but, should. So then the this eye. telescope is going up to look for stuff in the spectrum that like, even if you were looking up at the night sky, you wouldn't be able to see it because our, our eyes aren't tuned to it. I think but so. They're yeah. going to go take a look at stuff far away like Hubble's been doing, but in spectrum that that we can't see to see if there's other stuff yeah. out there emitting light. And for the most part, everything that we can see also emits light in other spectrums. So if it's looking right. in the infrared and we want to go look at a planet that we can see with our eyes, the Earth's still going to show up. It's just going to look kind of different. So, well, so here's an interesting... The One of the things... So we... There's a story I've always remembered that I can't remember if like I heard it on a... Somebody told it on a Boy Scout trip or if it was in some book of scary stories or something. But the premise was there was some sort of beast that uh, it only reflected light in a spectrum that we couldn't see. And so you cool. couldn't make out its features. You would just sort of see a blob in the way of things. A darkness. It would, come, it would come attack you. Yeah, it just looked like a darkness. It's like a black hole. Like a walking shadow kind of thing. Um, cool. And That's it was a really always, cool monster. It was a really creepy sort of image right the idea that all it reflects it but so like you could maybe see it with infrared right because it would because you if you were looking if you had a different type of sensor than our eyeball (laughs) yeah you know um yeah essentially unless it is a black hole it's giving off some form of radiation that we could detect with various sensors and we have sensors that can detect everything right um as far as i know but uh well so what's what's interesting there is if the idea that the thing reflects so it's not like it would be transparent because it would block what we could see. Right. And it would not reflect anything, which it's it's really well, it's, it's a weird thing to wrap your head around. Like the idea that like what we what you're seeing when you see something is the spectrum of light that's bouncing off that thing. Yeah. And then hitting your eye or is emitted by that thing. Yep. It's very it's very confusing. It gets very counterintuitive when you start talking about like optics and filters and stuff. And also, some things uh, only block certain spectrums, too. So, for instance, that's one of the reasons telescopes uh, have sensors that span various spectrums. Because when you look out into space, there's a lot of crap in the way. There's, like, clouds and dusts and material. And some spectrums of light, and I think infrared is one of them, gets through a lot of that junk easier. Like, we're in a dusty part of the Milky Way galaxy. And so, when you look up at the sky and you see all this, like, dirt in the... in the that, that big, like the Milky Way that you see up in the sky, a lot of that is, is quote unquote dust, which maybe just is like dust. Maybe there's just little particles and uh, different spectrum of light will get through that easier. And so you can get different pictures. You can get better resolution of things that are further away when you take pictures in various spectrum spectra of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Well, and so the idea of that, that beast with the darkness, right, is sort of the same ideas. If you think about what it's reflecting back at you is what you see when you see like the orange on a tiger and it's stripes and all that stuff. But if, if you didn't see the orange and stuff, it would still block the light that would be bouncing off other stuff and you would see it. So you would see this sort of dark figure and it's basically that principle that we use to detect big ass planets really far away and stars really far away and stuff. Like we learn more by figuring out what light is blocked than mm-hmm. what light we can see in the night sky frequently. Yeah, we um, we learn a lot by looking at. So the idea of, there. of being able to see something that it, as far as we can tell by looking at our visible spectrum, it might be completely blank and dark in the night sky. We might look at it with a different wavelength and have it be like, oh, bam, there's a planet <laughs> that we had no idea was there. <laughs> like other than it was maybe dark sometimes in that part of the sky right. and we weren't sure what was blocking it. We just had a major discovery this week announced. I think I have yesterday, not read yesterday today. Yesterday. Right? I haven't yeah. read the details, but I think it was just, I think it's exactly this. We just haven't been able to see uh, like millions of galaxies that have been blocked by dust in the sky and it's it's filling in like where there should be mass in the universe that we've detected oh i thought uh, you were gonna never say, gonna i thought it. you were gonna mention that i don't know what you're talking about i thought you were gonna mention the gravitational waves oh was that announced whatever yeah. we've discovered there 
apparently they have corroboration at this point from the two different test mechanisms. Those we could do a whole spheres. separate podcast on exactly how this works. But Man. basically, mathematically, Einstein predicted that Oh man, how do we do this without doing a whole 45 minutes on relativity? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know anything about this test except that there are these two like really fancy spheres uh, that were really hard to make. The really short version of his theory is that uh gravity is a product of space-time, which is an actual sort of physical like physical is not the right word cuz we don't touch it <laughs> there are no but right words for this conversation like it's an actual it's a substrate that you you could that can be manipulated not not by us but by things that happen maybe not by you um and so one of his theories was <laughs> that with a large enough moving force the like you should be able to detect or there should exist actual ripples in gravity um, and so we set up a test, which we could outline for you. It involves tubes and lasers and giant amounts of space out in the desert to try to pick up the flux caused by some giant, like, like celestial happening. And so basically what they did and, and, and apparently corroborated is they were able to actually measure the tiny, tiny fluctuation in the universe that hits the earth when two black holes collide. Um, and everybody's been freaking out about it all day. <laughs> nope. I have, I've been, it, it confirms the math behind that stuff, which now makes the math behind things like faster than light speed travel. A little tiny bit more plausible. Because uh, the basically the idea of warp speed is instead of moving a ship really fast through space, you actually warp space around the ship. And if this test proves that space time is warpable, then we might actually be able to have hyperdrive. Hell's yeah! The way warp, I said it earlier to somebody speed, on Facebook Scotty. was, if we could ride that wave. <laughs> <laughs> That, I mean, that's exactly exactly what a warp drive does in Star Trek. Yeah. There's a great book called The Physics of Star Trek, and I think there are a couple more of them by the same guy. Fun reads. They talk about all the technologies in Star Trek, and there was a lot of, a lot of science went into putting that world together. Um, so most of the stuff is corroborated with sort of uh, theoretical, potentially possible things. Right. Which is cool. It makes the show a lot more interesting than... Uh, one, another one of the reasons I, I tend to enjoy Star Trek a little more than I enjoy Star Wars. Star Wars is more just a fantasy right. world. Star Trek is how I would like to see uh, humanity progress. It's not, it's, it makes more of an effort to be what they would call hard science fiction, which is real hard. Uh, like the Martian is hard science fiction where everything in it is plausible. Mm. Barring one or two conceits, like the thickness of the space suits. Yeah, but and maybe like, maybe him directing himself to the ship via a hole in his suit. Yeah, that, that's kind of <laughs> fly. <out. laughs> I didn't like that Spoil one either. Spoiler alert. Nah. Um, yeah, you should have seen it alert. by now. If you care Old, enough get to out be listening here. to this podcast, you should have watched. You should have seen it. Shit already. You read the book. Everybody knows um, how it's gonna end. Everybody blows. But I up think and that's dies. funny because it's like it. It's back to a conversation that I think we've had before on the podcast but I don't care. We can have it over and over again. There's something like fundamentally satisfying about sports that put you in a sort of unity with nature, like carving on a snowboard, surfing. There's a reason surfers are so chill. There's something about catching a wave and, and the, the sort of balance and unity you have to achieve in order to ride it that like it's crazy to think that that might hold on the scale of gravity and space time and and black holes and we could cool. go 
just build, you know, get your silver surfer on cosmic ride, surfing, go ride yeah. around the universe on the on a on a gravitational wave, bro. It's pretty dope. <laughs> cool buzz and some tasty waves. I'd be stoked out there, just cruising, <laughs> cruising with the little prince. Hey, bro, what's up? How's your asteroid? Oh man. <laughs> okay, I feel like that's as good a place as any to wrap this one up. Mm-hmm. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we're going to try to do some more of these scattershot type episodes, put in some other ones. Uh, I think the next big one we're going to do is search engines. Oh, dig yeah. in on web crawlers, search engines, how all that crazy, crazy nonsense everybody uses every day works and no one has any idea how. Oh, this is a fun one. This can be a fun one. But uh, thanks for hanging out. You can find us wherever you find us. We'll We'll be there still. Although I just heard today that SoundCloud is operating at a massive loss, so we might need to find a new place to host our stuff. Yeah, for collapse. sure. <laughs> I don't think they're making any money. <laughs> also, let us know what you uh, think of these little shorties because uh, they're great little listeners. You know, when you're like cleaning up the kitchen after dinner, maybe. That's when I listen to a lot of short podcasts, that kind of stuff. There you go. And uh, iTunes. Oh, hey, you can also hit us at hello at zengineeringpodcast.com. If you email us how you like doing things. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello at zengineering.com. And still the best thing you can do to keep this this train rolling is rate and review on iTunes. Yeah. Even if you just say, what up? You sent me. Rock and roll. Well, I'm Adam, which I don't think I said at the beginning of the podcast. Awkward. We have to start over now. Awkward. I'm Brian. Happy birthday, everybody. Hope it's a great day. (laughs) (laughs) Happy birthday. What's that? What? Oh, what am I thinking of?